all right everybody how's it going it is again wednesday september 9th 2021 and uh or September 8th, sorry, I don't know why the hell I I'm keep doing that. I keep saying it's September 9th, I don't I don't know why. But it's fine, I don't I don't mind it. There you get a rare blooper uh, intro. But all right, let's uh, flip over all the way to the next one. So yeah, we've been doing the division predictions. We've done the uh, AFC, uh, AFC and NFC South, AFC and NFC West, obviously you can see. And uh, now we're at today, or well, the next video here, it's all one day basically. Uh, now we're moving on to the AFC North and NFC North, uh, two divisions with the hardest schedules in the NFL. Uh, I think they, it's like the top, like, what is it, eight teams are basically these guys, uh, the AFC North and NFC North intertwined. So, um, yeah, so, you know, their records may be a little bad and they may seem bad, but again, these are, you know, these teams kind of got the short end of the sale, who they're playing. They have to play the NFC North, pretty competitive, always hard games. They play the AFC West, and they play the AFC North uh, themselves, So and, and random West teams. So they, they can wind up getting beat by the West. Um, you know, they, they, the division games are always going to be messy. The West is, you know, pretty solid teams. Um, you know, two of them are pretty solid, the, and the Broncos might be pesky. Uh, and the Ra they're, they're all pesky teams, but, you know. And the North, they're all pesky teams, too. Um... All right, we're going to start this off. Let's get going. Jump right into it because, you know, we've got a lot of... I've got to record one more of these and, uh, you know, it's taking some time. So, all right, Cincinnati Bengals. I think they finish in fourth. I think that's where most people are going to have them. Um, I think the offensive line situation is going to be pretty dreadful again for them. Uh, other than that, I don't know. They're, they're not terrible all, all, all around. Their defense could use a, like a couple up piece, like spots to upgrade. But, I mean, most defenses could use small upgrades and bits and pieces. I wonder what the line looks like. I think they lost Lawson and stuff like that. So I'm, a, I'm questioning what the line's going to look like on defense. But, other, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't think that really matters too much when the offensive line probably won't be able to do much to keep Burrow upright. Uh, again, they maybe should have gone with Slater. They maybe should have gone with Sewell, however you want to take that. Um, cause you probably could have drafted someone a little later, um, maybe even taking pits and have him block a little extra then go out for the, I don't, I don't know what they could have done different, but again, it looks like the offensive line situation is shaping up to be very similar to last season. Let's just hope Burrow is a little, you know, plays a little safer, plays a little smarter and decides, you know, let's not run around until we get this line figured out, huh? And uh, we'll, we'll see how it plays. But again, I just, I don't see it. I don't think Zach Taylor is that good of a coach. I think they should probably knee him after the season or during the season um, and just kind of move on to something new here because it's, I, I don't know, man. This they, They're they they're just not a good team right now. But they have like talent, so it's very confusing with them. I, I really don't know how to fix the Bengals. I hope they do better though because I'm rooting for Burrow. It's just, sheesh. Uh, the Steelers, I, yeah, I know, right? I have them at nine and eight, crazy. Um, I think they're going to start out good, but I think it's going to be a very similar situation to last year, despite even having a bye week. Um, I think they're, uh, they're a good, they're going to be really hard to beat early in the season. Then big Ben's going to just like crack and show his age. And that's just going to be that. And plus, I, I really don't know what the TJ Watt situation is looking like. So that that could cost them a few games early. And then by the time they start winning games, when everything's maybe resolved or they have it all figured out. Um, without him or with him, you know, whatever, whatever happens, um, they can start winning. And then eventually Ben's going to shit out. Like he's, you know, I feel like with his age and his health and his elbow and the fact that he, you know, probably doesn't take care of himself in the greatest way that like guys like Brady and Rogers and Ryan, all those guys who are like super health freaks, uh, have done and always have like taken care of themselves. So I, I don't see Ben being able to have that longevity. I think this might even be his last season. So we'll see if he can, you know, tough it out and they have a good year all the way through. But I have questions about Ben's longevity, um, questions about certain spots on that defense, certain questions about the O-line even uh, losing Pouncey. So I'm like, well, what's the what's the line going to look like now? Is the running game, seems like the running game is going to be revitalized. Again, I don't think they're going to be like, a bad team i just think they're going to slip up late in the season again and kind of it's going to be a little bit more pronounced this time and and it probably is going to be intertwined like the fall late might be like four games but i think they'll already have a, a few more losses like i don't see a no 11 and no start this year so the, the fall that they have isn't as like dramatic they finish 12 and 4 kind of like whew, avoid anything too bad but again um if they didn't have that 11 and 0 start eh, couple games different 
wind up like this. So I don't know, man. This uh, could be a tough year for the old Pittsburgh Steelers as they uh, start to age and uh, and the division around them uh, around them is very good. They're playing very good teams right now. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough. Uh, second place, of course, I have the Baltimore Ravens. So everyone kind of you kind of know who I have winning this thing now. Um, I think the Ravens will be good. I think the Ravens are a good team. I just think that um, early off in the season they're going to be kind of beatable um, until the till everything gets healthy. I feel like there's a lot of weird injuries on the Ravens, especially on the offensive side of the ball. The running game isn't super shored up right now. There's kind of some confusion with that. Uh, you got Lamar, so you're good to go. Um, the offensive line, I want to see how that's reset with Orlando Brown. I hope it still looks good. So I have questions on that, especially early in the season, though. I do think it'll be fine once the season gets going after a couple games, um, kind of similar to the chiefs offensive line situation. While I, I do think it'll cost them a game or two early, maybe just one. Um, I think it will be a good line. It just has to get set. Um, so similar for Baltimore. Um, but again, I think, uh, the, the weird health of the receiving game isn't going to be good. Uh, I wonder what the defense looks like this year without uh, Judon. And there's just question marks again. And, and I wonder if they're going to be able to compete. Like Cleveland's going to be like a bull, like a bullhorn, like a bulldog rather. Not bullhorn. What the hell is that? Uh, like a bulldog coming through this. It's going to be it's going to be an interesting division playing good teams, playing competitive, scrappy teams. Um, again, while I think the Ravens will be a good team and I think they're, they could be a playoff team. Um, I think that there is a stumble out of the gate and a couple late losses that give them to seven. But I do think they're a double digit win team that's pretty solid and they'll finish solid once all the injuries get kind of short up and they have their full team available to play. I, I quite like the Ravens to be uh, to be a thorn in the side of teams late in the year. So, again, it's mainly just because I, I don't know what they're going to look like with like weird injuries and a bunch of like. The offense is kind of limited again because of the, those injuries. And I'm not sure what the running game is going to look like, which is very important for the Ravens offense to function good. So we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully, you know, we'll see. Uh, and I have the Browns winning the division. Um, I think Cleveland might be one of the most, uh, one of the better rosters in the NFL. We'll see how Baker looks in year two in the Stefanski offense. You got the planning and the coaching of Stefanski. Very, very good. You've got the defense, which is <laughs> fucking which is quite loaded, I would actually have to say. Um, sorry about that. My phone went off. That was freaky. Um, pretty improved, uh, good improved secondary. They added some things into it. Uh, good linebacking core, good defensive front, especially with Clowney up there with Garrett now. Um, they've got Chubb and Hunt, probably the best tandem in the NFL. Uh, Juice and Odell, and as long as Odell, can, they can figure out how to formulate every all those receivers and tight ends into that offense. That's going to be gnarly, man. And I think with the further year with Stefanski, same everything, that's going to be so important for Baker, who's never had that in his career. The same coach, coordinator for year to year. That's so important, man. Everything's the same for him. I can imagine Baker's ready just to go out there and ball out, man. This team's really good. Um, I think inexperience is what cost them in that playoff game against the uh, Chiefs. I think um, they might have choked, yeah, but I think they're also quite a young team that was that kind of the moment got them. But again, I think that was a good learning moment. I think that they come out of the gate strong against the Chiefs. I know that they are ready to play that game. Um, I see it as a big upset for Cleveland, and it's a season setter. If they win that game, I think they're going to be, this is their destiny, is this division. Um, and after just a few years after losing all those games, Baker is going to look like a miracle worker. So, Especially Stefanski, too. I mean, they're, that team is very well put together. Um, very few holes, great line. Great running game, great receivers, great tight ends. Like, great. Everything's good on that team. What's bad? You could say Baker, but it's like he had a pretty good year last year in another new offense. Uh, so we'll, this is the first year where you can really get an idea of what Baker is. Everything's the same. Teams have tape, and it's going to be all the same. So we'll see what Baker looks like. I'm guessing he's a good quarterback based on what I've seen so far. And, uh, yeah, that's what I think for the AFC North. Pretty, uh, pretty good division. They're going to have some tough games. Sorry, my throat's starting to get a little dry. Got to take down some water. I've uh, been talking for like fucking almost 40 minutes. Um, but all right. <clears throat> so yeah, that's my, uh, those, this is my AFC North. Could be wrong, but I, I'm pretty, f I'm pretty sure I got that one. Some variation of this records could vary. You could even flip Pittsburgh, Baltimore. Uh, it's going to be something like this. I do think the important thing is the Browns win the division and the Bengals finish last. 
let's move on to the nfc north which is probably a little easier to distinguish who's going to do what in this division um just kind of based off of like who do you think's gonna finish last uh the common opponents for the nfc north are of course the nfc north uh the afc north we just figured that out and they play the nfc west <laughs> good luck and then they play a random AFC West team. They like the this division got screwed. Like I, this is hard divisions for a team like I don't know the Detroit Lions who have a brand new everything, um, and you have major questions about secondary linebacker defensive line. Well, defensive line's pretty good. Um, quarterback play, uh, receivers. The only thing you really have pretty solid is a, a running game system that looks pretty good. An offensive line with very good pieces. Hopefully they have cohesion and chemistry. And you got a tight end in Hawkinson. And a pretty good defensive line. I'm not really sure what else they got going on for the Lions. Um, I'm, I, I really like the Lions. I'm going to watch a lot of their games this year, of course. Um, <laughs> but, but it's like... What are they going to do? I don't know. I, and it's not even Campbell's fault. It's just I feel like Patricia didn't do a very good job. I, I don't know. I guess their linebacking core isn't too bad, actually. Think of Jamie Collins. I guess it's just really Jamie Collins. But I don't know. I, the Lions aren't going it's, to. It's mainly I think the Lions are going to struggle because they play so many good teams. And they're so limited, especially on defense. I'm, I have no. Unless their secondary is just shockingly good. This is probably pretty accurate. Maybe five, six wins. If they play like way out of their minds, they could win five or six. But again, that's that would be like they would have to get some crazy number of upsets. I think they'll be much better in 20, next season. Um, I think this is kind of going to be a step year for them. Um, I'm not even uncertain they might tank. I'm not even certain about like I, it's just Campbell makes me think they're going to try. They could even do like a we're going to try to win and, you know, end up losing. But I, I, I don't know. We'll see. They could be a shock team, but again, that would mean that they're hiding something I, that I don't know about. Maybe maybe Okuda took a step and is now like a top five corner in the league. That would that would pretty much be what it took, right? Again, no disrespect to the Lions. I think this is a step year. They need a transition year after Patricia. It's understandable. Um, the Bears again. While I do, while I'm, I think Justin Fields actually might be a pretty good quarterback in the league. <laughs> here here's hear me out on this thinking why risk your future franchise qb that you have a lot of hope for in justin fields with that dog shit offensive line when you can throw andy dalton to the wolves for a few i don't know four games see how the line actually plays and then bring in justin fields and let him play now do i think that'll make the offense better uh yeah but will they start winning a bunch of games sure they'll win more games i think they start terribly with dalton possibly zero and four um and then, you know, I think Fields can come in and though he might lose seven games, I think he'll win six of them. So he'll go six and seven as a starter, which is a very good rookie record for a team with a bad offensive line. Uh, questionable, at, you know, other than Allen Robinson. Uh, now, the receiving game isn't too bad, actually. They're not bad overall. It's just a line, man. It, it was so bad last year. It was just a, it was a nightmare for any quarterback under center um, or in the shotgun or, you know. When they put Mitch in, they did better because Mitch could run for his life and get the hell out of the way. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of a weird thing. They started scoring a lot of points at the end of the season uh, because Mitch could actually escape the quarterback pressures and get the hell out of there. And now now Dalton's going to get thrown to the Wolves at week one against the Rams. I feel bad. Donald's going to. I hope Donald doesn't hurt Dalton in week one. Like, that's my real fear. That's, that's probably why Dalton's starting that first game. I don't know if he'll even start any games after, but they just don't want to throw a uh, poor Justin Fields out to the Rams like that and just get destroyed <laughs> like that they know that's a smart move by Chicago I, I would do that as well plus you get to see how your line looks maybe it's not as bad in like actual game speed um it's what you got to hope for right a little bit of copium for the uh, Bears fans all right well that's kind of how I think that plays and again I think they have a good team it's just the quarterback thing and like the line is so bad I, I really think that's going to hold them back again this year I mean it killed them I mean, it, it hurt them last year um their defense was great i think it'll be a good defense again but again it was good defense anyway they give up when the offense is bad um of course i have the vikings finishing in second so we all know who's winning this division again oh my goodness it's not really even shocking i mean they got the <laughs> reigning of it <laughs> like aaron's playing out of his mind 
I don't. I can't even make jokes anymore uh, about the Vikings. I, I like. What, what am I gonna say? He's a diva. Not really. You watch the McAfee show. Whatever. Anyway, let's talk about the Vikings. We're not talking about them yet. Um, them being the, the Packers, obviously. Uh, the Vikings. Anyway. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like. I feel like they're held back by Kirk Cousins. Like I'm, I'm just not a believer in Kirk, so I can't really have them taking that next step until they get rid of that that goofy dude that quarterback that they got. Um, while I do think Kirk will win against like the bad teams, the teams you can kind of like beat up on, he's he's got the reputation of, you know, prime time games aren't really his thing. You know, really good teams aren't really his thing to win against. But like put him up against the Lions, he'll kind of like look like a like a unbeatable warlord. Um, so I don't know. I'm not really too sold on this uh, Kirk Cousins phenom situation thing. And I don't think most people buy it either. I really think uh, most people kind of, especially Minnesota Vikings fans. I know I have friends with a few who are, you know, not really the biggest Kirk guys. They like him because he's like a good dude. He seems like a nice dude, uh, you know, uh, a good teammate and things like that. But it's just, you know, <laughs> he's a very expensive game manager. Like if his con, I guess if his contract wasn't so goddamn big, and like he wasn't getting paid like he's like a top quarterback, then like maybe it'd be debatable. Like, hey, it's not that big a deal. He's not that good, but like he probably should throw for about 45 and like 440 touchdowns with his like stacked receiving core, and he's probably going to be nowhere near that. And that's going to be that's what's holding them back. I think they're a good team. I, I also have questions about their secondary a little bit, um, how, the, how they're going to look. But I think they added in Patrick Peterson, so they're going to be much improved. They're probably a playoff team. Again, probably a playoff team. We'll see. Um, it just depends on how the NFC, how I feel about the West and everything. But again, you know, Kirk, Kirk is the thing holding me back. And playing all these good teams, I could see Kirk struggling, especially against like the West teams. Uh, some of the North teams, um, the Packers. I mean, like I could, I could probably point the losses. It, it, like they could probably lose once to the Packers. Um, they'll probably lose to the Browns. Probably to the 49ers, Rams. Possibly the Seahawks, the Ravens. Flip a coin on the Steelers. And maybe one to the Bears. You see what I mean? Like, there's seven losses you can easily point to. Or I think they play the Chargers. They could lose to them. It's just, you know, there's the set, you know, you can see seven losses on their schedule. So, lo and behold, this is why I have winning the NFC North. I don't think anyone's surprised. I think this is most people's pick. Whatever, dude. I mean, it's, it's yeah, Rodgers. Really going to bet against him? Even I've given up on him, man. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I've given up on Ben against the guy. What am I going to do? One of the better quarterbacks in the NFL. It is what it is. Um, they'll probably even get to the NFC Championship game and lose. But, I mean, they'll probably get there. It seems like they get there quite often. That's their thing is uh, getting there, but, you know, not necessarily winning it. But, anyway, there's not much to dissect there. I mean, most people are going to have the Packers. But, yeah, that's how I have the divisions breaking down. Hold on. I don't think you got a good look at that. Um, let me scroll up. But yeah, there, there's my uh, NFC North. Uh, so Lions, Bears, Vikings, Packers. Pretty much probably how most people have that playing out, uh, I would imagine. But again, those are just my predictions. Um, let me know what you think down below. Let me know your predictions for the NFC North and uh, AFC North down below. I'll be sure to comment back as soon as I can. Um, yeah, but again, remember, these are just predictions or just for fun. You know, um, I could be dead wrong. I could be 100% accurate. It's, that's the fun of the predictions. That's why they're fun. It's, it's, it's essentially like a jump ball kind of on these. So but I don't know because you know with injuries and all kinds of other uh things you can't really account for it's really kind of hard to play the prediction game so we'll see how it plays uh thank you so much for listening I appreciate it if you enjoyed it leave a like subscribe to the channel if you're new around here both things help us grow all that YouTube fun stuff um yeah I appreciate you guys for listening we got one more uh prediction video that'll be right on the heels of this one so you can pretty much just listen to these in a trio of each other it's like a good hour long session if you if you will so yeah hopefully uh you're enjoying it um i will see you in the next one have a good rest of your day night whenever you're listening uh peace out can't wait for the season just a day away yay peace